The last time I went to Egypt was 13 years ago. At the time, I bought a brand new Canon 7D and a 28 to 135 lens. And back then, that was a lot of money for us. We were still brandly, brandly married. We were newly married, we had a ton of student loans. So we get to Egypt and the very first taxi ride from the airport to the apartment, I left my camera bag in the taxi. And the taxi guy had no way of contacting us. That was it. My entire plan to take all these pictures in Egypt died. I had a little Canon point and shoot at the time, which I used. The quality left a lot to be desired, you know? It was, it was really bad. It was a really terrible point and shoot. <laughs> So, fast forward to summer of 2022. This year, we're going to Egypt for the first time in 13 years. And this time, I'm gonna take my Canon camera, and this time, I'm not gonna lose it. <laughs> I'm taking my Canon R5 and my 1535 and 7200 with me. Now, I would normally take my Fujifilm X100V, but I feel like I have to, like, avenge my past, you know? Avenge my past. So we started packing, and we ended up at the airport, and after a 12 hour flight, we ended up in Egypt. Oh, that took them. Yeah. Let's move all the way in. We need, we need all the space that we can get. Yeah. We used a travel agency this time to help us navigate the country and transportation. They dealt with food, transportation, lodging, all that was taken care of by the agency because we had three young kids this time and we didn't want the hassle of having to figure out where to stay and where to eat and all this kind of stuff. Actually, speaking of kids, having kids unexpectedly made this trip a lot easier photography-wise. Now. Egypt is not a country that's very well known for its photography. After the recent political events in 2010 onwards, photography is basically banned. But our guide gave us a really good tip on how to take photos, and this honestly saved me through the entire trip. <laughs> the first thing we did was go to the Giza Pyramids. The most iconic, cliche thing to do in Egypt is to go and see the pyramids. The pyramids look incredible in person. They look literally out of this world. It's really hard to imagine how they could have done this with simple tools like a hammer and chisel, and that's it, really. These are monumental buildings, and photographing them is really hard, even with a wide-angle lens. It's really hard to grasp the grandioseness of the area when you're there. That much? Yeah, that's a lot. We stayed in Zemetic Cairo for a little bit. And experienced our first sunset there. And the sunsets in Egypt are honestly on a whole other level. I have never seen this many incredible sunsets in a row. It's hard to not get a picture, even with your phone, of an incredible sunset in Egypt. The next day we went to Islamic Cairo and walked around for a little bit and experienced all of the different mosques and things in the area. You could look up, just don't fall. It's incredible. And this mosque was built by a woman, by a lady. Okay, not by a king this time. But it was built by the mother of the people. <laughs> But yeah, it was very sunny, so all day I literally just put on F16, aperture priority mode, the shutter speed was pretty high, obviously, 
and just fired away. Before this trip, I was a very avid Aperture Priority user. Always Aperture Priority, the lowest you can go, 2.8, 1.4, whatever you want. But on this trip, I feel like I evolved in my thinking about it. I was using a lot more higher apertures because I wanted everything in focus. I didn't want just a little sliver. And I feel like that led to just better composition in general. Because everything's in focus, I was beginning to focus more on composition rather than just camera settings and aperture. So I spent a lot of time working on where to put the subjects in the photo as opposed to just taking the photo at the highest aperture and blowing the back. Religious school and more. We flew to Luxor and we went on a Faluka ride in the Nile as well as visited a lot of other temples with our guides. And I remember in Luxor thinking that when I get home to America, I'm gonna figure out a different camera to use beside this one. I was so ready to give up on it because the camera kept overheating in video. Every time I would take the camera out, the thing would flash right at me saying that it was going to overheat. I was even in just 1080p regular mode. Anything beyond 24 FPS would overheat. And it wouldn't even let you use it. It would just say 0000. zero, zero, zero. Now granted, I was in Egypt and it was hot. So really, I understand that it's hot and the camera is going to be more prone to overheating. But when it gets to the point where you can't shoot anything beside 24 FPS, I was pretty frustrated, honestly. I love shooting 120 FPS. I love shooting slow motion 60 FPS. So I remember having a very clear thought like this is it. Like after this trip is done, I'm going to retire this whole system and move on to a different system that does not overheat because it was really that annoying. Until the very next day, I wake up in the morning, I look at my notifications and I see Canon releases firmware update 1.6, which supposedly eliminates overheating. It lets you put the high temp mode on, which lets you be more resilient to overheating. So I took it out in literally That's 110 one. degree one. weather, full sunlight, and I shot 4K 120 almost all day and no overheating warning at all, nothing. It just worked flawlessly. And I was like, yes, thank you. Thank you for saving me a ton of money switching systems. I love Canon but I just wanted to work when I'm using it. You know, it's, it's a camera that was just so annoying before, but now, honestly, this turned into a camera that I love instead of being one that I have to constantly work around. Up until this point, I've only really used the 1535. I didn't take out my big zoom lens, the 7200, because Number one, it's very white, it's very large, and it's very intimidating. I've already been stopped a bunch of times for taking photos, even though all I'm doing is just taking pictures as a tourist. But all that changed when I got on the Habiya boat. At the Habiya is a sailboat that sails in the Nile River. We booked a cruise from Luxor to Aswan about five days and four nights. The boat would dock at different places and our guides would show us around the different areas on the way down to Aswan but I was really happy that I brought my long lens with me on this boat because a lot of these subjects are just so far away and being able to really compress the image and zoom in there really, really helped get some amazing pictures. It's also not really a lens that I use at all in America. So having a different lens with a different character really helped me just expand my horizons a little bit. I'm usually a wide angle guy all the way. Every once in a while the boat would stop and we would take some take a tour of the town and uh, some of these villages are really old and really small and really intimate and we as foreigners going in there it kind of felt a little weird but honestly the Egyptian people are just really nice and everyone is just so accommodating and so hospitable once you get to know them. But 
Again, due to the customs there, you're not allowed to take photos of just people on the street. That would be really weird and you would definitely get asked, what are you doing? The only way I'm able to get all these images that you see here is because I'm riding in the back of a horse and I'm able to take a picture from the horse and then quickly ride away. But if I was on my feet, I would get stopped constantly and I would not have been able to get these awesome pictures. Our last night on the boat was very sad because we all wanted to keep going. The people we met there were just so nice. The views were so picturesque. The sunsets every night were incredible. It's our last day on the boat and I didn't really vlog much while I was on it, but man, was this experience just an amazing one. The golden sunsets and the food and the crew and everyone was so nice. I don't think this is going to be our last time on this kind of boat. Taking this trip with no work on your mind, nothing to do work-wise, really was just exactly what I needed to like recharge. Our boat is docking for the final night here in very close to Aswan. I am really glad that I got my Canon camera and not my Fujifilm because I feel like I would have been limited by that one and I really wanted to have been able to go from extremely wide to extremely compressed telephoto and I like the variety. We spent the last couple of weeks in Alexandria, Egypt, visiting family and just kind of lounging around. Alexandria is a coastal town north of Egypt that has some of the most beautiful beaches you will ever see in your life. With the telephoto lens, I was able to really compress the background and create some remarkable images that honestly I am very proud of. So yeah, that was a very quick summary of my trip through photos. We spent about a month there and honestly, I would highly recommend visiting Egypt if you're into photography. There is so much you can capture there and such a diverse range of subjects. You can get sandy deserts, blue beaches, street photography, city life, coastal life and everything in between. I mean, there's just so much to do and see there that if you're a photographer, you will have a great time there. So here are my thoughts on photography in Egypt in general. Number one, street photography is generally not allowed, but you want to do so with a friend or with a group or a travel agency. Don't just go by yourself. You will get stopped. You will get harassed. You will be asked, what are you doing? And you will have to probably delete a bunch of images that you didn't want to delete. If you have kids, the process is a lot easier because you can just put your kids in front of whatever you want to take a picture of, you know, look past them, take a photo, and then the, everyone will think you're taking a picture of your kids. Number three, general rule of thumb is never make eye contact with anyone. Simply take your photo, look in the viewfinder, look away, take your next photo. The second you make eye contact with someone, they will think, what is this guy doing? Why are you taking a picture of me? It just makes you more suspicious. And if you're stopped, you know, just smile, have a good time, tell them you're just take, taking pictures as a tourist and you like the country and you love the food, etc. And most of the time, you know, people will, will let you go. And of course, it wouldn't be a trip to Egypt without having Lutmut al-Adi or the bite of the judge in English. It's really just fried dough with sugar on top. And it's, it's really amazing, but I don't know why they call it Loma Tal Adi. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.